Okay, so let's get started with the Gauss and split, uh, splitting. So last time we started to discuss the problem of the novel view synthesis. Uh, the basic idea is that if we have some kind of the given a collection of the 2D images that are captured from the all different views, uh, we want to basically synthesize a new image from the basically new view viewpoint. And for that, the basic idea that was really successful in the null pipeline was basically uh, doing some kind of the reconstruction of the 3D, but not into any kind of solid form, but into any kind of the volume, uh, in a way that we can have some kind of the more the flexibility uh, in this 3D reconstruction. And then for that, like what we need to do is that we are not using the typical some kind of the uh, rendering equation, but we need to actually uh, incorporate some kind of the volume rendering the equation. So that's why we start to see uh, this kind of like the volume rendering the equation. Uh, here, basically, there are basically three components. Uh, like one is about the opacity, uh, which is about like how likely the ray uh, will hit something at that point at the, along the ray. And the radiance is basically some kind of the emitted, uh, some kind of color information or uh, emitted into the specific direction at that point. And based on the opacity information, we are also calculating the transparency, uh, which becomes some kind of the non increasing function. So here, basically, transparency basically meant. Uh, like how likely the ray will basically travel until that point without hitting any kind of things. So if we multiply both the transparency and the opacity, that becomes the probability, like how the ray will basically uh, you know, travel until that point without hitting any things, and then stopping there by with some kind of collision at the point. And we also derive some kind of a discrete form or like this kind of the integral. This was basically converted like this. So you, you could see that this really becomes some kind of the calculating the expected value of the, the emitted the, the you know, light information uh, with the, the probability to come here, uh, which is basically defined as kind of the multiplication of the transparency and the opacity. So this was kind of the basic deformulation. And see, one thing that I really like to basically remark here is that uh, while this was kind of very recent the paper, which was like published in 2020, uh, the basic idea that we are basically having some kind of implicit representation for the 3D and doing some kind of the volume rendering uh, was actually quite old idea. So this was actually the case that we are revisiting some kind of the, some old ideas in the graphics uh, in a way that we are integrating this idea in the neural net so that we can do some kind of 3D construction uh, with some very classic ideas in the compare graphics. So this was really a nice example. And then if you can find that there are some kind of the multiple the previous works more than like 20 years ago, or about like 30 years ago, uh, for some of the cases uh, that are basically having introducing some different ways to uh, define this kind of the implicit uh, representations. So I'd like to basically recommend you to check out this kind of old work. Uh, so sometimes there are some kind of the hidden gem in some kind of the old work that can be really uh, revisited and basically uh, get some like the shine again in some kind of the recent neural literature. Uh, actually, yeah, so those are all the cases that we are uh, only using some kind of impulsive representation. And after that, like the people also started to look into making some kind of the hybrid representation, basically combining some, you know, uh, impulsive representation and the explicit representation. So since this is not the neural network course, so I'm going to uh, skip some details and briefly just go over with some basic ideas. So there are some kind of the previous work, uh, which is also utilizing some kind of voxel representation. So instant NGP was also one of the very famous the cases uh, that is basically you know, uh, reducing the computation time of the reconstruction and also the rendering uh, dramatically. So it does really uh, be able to basically reconstruct uh, some kinds of these things uh, in some kind of some minutes or even in some seconds, in a few seconds, while basically taking lots of the memory uh, with some kind of 3D buckles. And try plane was kind of the good trade-off in terms of not taking too much the memory, uh, but still basically you know uh, reducing the computation time for both the reconstruction and also the rendering, uh, not having some kind of every single box in this 3D space, uh, but representing uh, all the kind of quantity at you know the point in this 3D space as kind of the combination uh, coming from the uh, the projected point in the three uh, the planes like x, y plane, y, z plane, and z, x plane. So by having this kind of the three planes, uh, we could basically have some kind of the, you know, interesting trade-off, like when combining some implicit representation and also the explicit representation. 
So point cloud based rendering was also the interesting case that we are basically having some sort of the rough uh, the reconstruction of the, the 3D shape into the point cloud and doing some kind of the same the volume rendering uh, by the shifting the ray and basically you know checking some kind of the nearest the kind of the points. Uh, along the way. Uh, so this is kind of also uh, some sort of the you know, base work that we are also going to discuss uh, in the cloud and this planning. And also there are some kind of previous rough which are also using the mesh as kind of the some sort of the rough structure for the 3D shapes and basically adding some kind of the neural the attributes uh, over the, the 3D the surface of the mesh. And the main thing that we are going to discuss for today is basically the split based representation. So here, basically, the idea is that we are now basically having some sort of the some three D Gaussians uh, as kind of the some some you know basic the primitives. So instead of like using the points, uh, which only has the you know the position information, uh, now we are defining some kind of three D Gaussians, which become some kind of the uh, point and some kind of small volume in the three D space, uh, in a way that they can basically have some kind of the better uh, expressions for these three D shapes. So let's get into some more details about the Gaussian splitting. I guess most of you uh, have seen this video. Let me replay this again. Yeah, so I guess many of you would be familiar with this video. So this was not just like video that was captured in the real scene, but actually it's really kind of the video by just like navigating some kind of the reconstructed uh, virtual 3D scene. Uh, so what they have done is that they just like capture some kind of the lots of the images from the some real scene and did some kind of 3D construction using the Gaussian splitting uh, algorithm and then navigating some kind of the reconstruct scenes by just like, uh, you know, changing the position and the viewpoint. So as like we really need some kind of the, the space in the game, like we are basically uh, doing this kind of the, some rendering. And you could see that you know, these are like all the rendered in real time. So this was the uh, case like having the 16 frames per second in the rendering. And also the you know reconstruction takes like you know a much smaller amount of time compared to the null. Uh, so this was basically very, uh, interesting the work in terms of that it could basically reduce the rendering time uh, into like you know 60 frames per second so which is really uh, enabling some kind of the real-time rendering with this kind of the uh, neural net based some kind of reconstruction and here the basic idea is that uh, instead of like using some pure the impulsive representation uh, we are basically having some sort of the uh, combining some explicit representation uh, which was basically using some kind of ellipsoid as I said uh, in the previous this slide. Uh, so on, in the online of the design, we are having this kind of some, you know, uh, so ellipsoid structure. Uh, if we just directly render those kind of the ellipsoid, then we get, we see those kind of things. But when you basically combine some sort of the, some newer, uh, some, some, you know, uh, the, the properties or uh, attributes for each of the, um, you know, the, the Gaussians, and basically use some kind of the volume rendering the equation, uh, we can get much kind of the realistic images as the output. Yeah, so basically what we want to do, uh, what we want to achieve some kind of the, the neural rendering the pipeline. Basically, we want to get some kind of the very accurate uh, the rendering the output. So basically, when we uh, render some kind of these things uh, from some kind of the, the viewpoint, uh, we want to basically match the rendered image with the ground structures, the image that we have. And also the fast rendering is also one of the important part in the neural rendering. So if we use the typical the vanilla of the, the neural the pipeline, you can see that actually it takes uh, lots of the time because you need to shoot the ray uh, for every single pixel and need to sample the points over the ray and just integrate all the things over the rays. Uh, this is basically involving lots of the time for the computation. Also, the question is that how we can also achieve this kind of the fast uh, rendering the speed, uh, even in the real time. Uh, and also the memory efficiency. Uh, obviously, the NERP is kind of good in terms of achieving the, uh, the memory efficiency because everything is represented uh, into the you know, implicit function. Like if we start to basically incorporate some kind of explicit representation, uh, then typically we have some kind of a trade-off. So as we basically have some uh, faster the computation the time, we, we, we should be the case that we are also taking uh, the more the memory. So here also the question is that while having the fast uh, the, the computation time, how we can also reduce the, uh, the memory the consumption. So that's also the one question. And also how much is, is you know easy to integrate uh, into some kind of existing graphics the pipeline is also one of the questions. 
And for that, basically, the solution this splitting was kind of the reason that was basically achieving uh, all these kind of things. So the Gaussian splitting uh, basically provides some basically very high accuracy in terms of like matching the case and our kind of images uh, with the other state or the, the neuropathy methods. And also it's super fast, but you can see this basically, you know, rendering things uh, for like you know, taking, rendering more than 60 frames of the, the images per second. And so it's really fast. And also for the uh, reconstruction, it's taking like, much less time uh, compared to the, the vanilla dinner. And also it's quite the minority efficient, uh, it can be, so many, many kind of the, the Gaussian split the outputs can be actually rendered even in the mobile devices. And also interestingly, the Gaussian split what became uh, very famous in terms of like being integrated into many graphics the engines, into the Unity, Unreal the engines, for those cases, you can see some kind of plugging of the Gaussian split now. So it's really uh, becoming really popular in many kind of graphics the pipelines. So what's the basic idea for the Gaussian split? So basically the Gaussian split was inspired also by some kind of old work. So that's why I'm saying that you know, there can be some also the hidden gems in the main kind of the uh, old work. Uh, so actually Gaussian split uh, is based on the point-based rendering, uh, which was first introduced in the 2001. So there's the type of here. Uh, so it should be like the 2001. And at that time, like more than 20 years ago, like people actually started looking into some kind of the ideas about the point-based graphics uh, in some multiple reasons. So that actually one of the reasons that you know why people started looking into the point-based graphics is that at the time we started to see some kind of the some uh some advances in the you know the GPU, the techniques in terms of the now the GPU at the time can render like more than one 100 millions of the purchases per second. Uh, which is really was actually quite fast the completion the, the speed at the time. And if we also start to basically describe all the kind of details of the 3D shapes, uh, then the only the triangles becomes uh, very small. Uh, so here that question is that like instead of like using the triangles in the mesh, uh, would it be possible to basically utilize some different types of the primitives uh, for the fast uh, for, for the rendering? So especially in the case that when you can basically handle lots of the vertices. Uh, why don't you just directly use the you know, the points uh, instead of like having the faces, uh, especially when you want to basically describe all the details. So this was like basically one of the, the questions that people had at the time. Like why don't you just use the points instead of the, the mesh the faces? And also what we started to see at the time was that like people also started to have some really good uh, 3D scanner. Uh, so these are some some kind of these uh, the outputs of like rendering some kind of the scan the object. So this was also the very famous the project at the time, uh, which is the you know, digital the Michelangelo the project, uh, which is really basically 3D scanning some kind of the statue, like the David statue here uh, by the Michelangelo. Uh, it's kind of like idea like we are uh, converting all these kind of some physical the object into some kind of the some digitized uh, kind of things. So you could see that basically at that time, like people just made this kind of giant the 3D scanner. Uh, which is really giving some very high accuracy. Uh, so it's really like capturing this like five a meter the statue uh, with the 0 0.25 millimeter accuracy. So which is really accurate, right? Uh, and capturing this kind of entire the statue uh, with the four million the points. And then here the question in, in the graphics was basically you know, how we can basically handle this kind of the uh, very high resolution the point cloud. Uh, so if we also start to convert this into the mesh, then it will take lots of the computation time. So the question is like, why don't you just directly render this kind of point cloud? Uh, so that's also like the case, like stimulating uh, the idea of the point-based graphics. So I also recommend you to check out this kind of old work. Even there was kind of the conference uh, of what the, the point-based graphics and lots of the research at the time. Uh, you can also check out some kind of the course note. Uh, describing this kind of some some new techniques. So the basic idea in the point-based rendering is that we are basically uh, having the points as kind of the samples uh, over the, the surface, and each of the you know these kind of the points will basically describe the geometry information and also encode some kind of the uh, some reflectance the properties like some kind of diffusion collapse or something. But obviously, those kind of points are not providing any information about the surface. So there's no kind of the connectivity information. 
And also there's basically no texture map or any bump and B maps or any kind of the surface information. So, and these kind of the points are basically called as kind of the surface element or subfelt or basically you know, surface split as well. So there are basically some multiple the terms that call this kind of the point. So the basic third bell uh, basically includes the information of the position and also the color information. And here the question might be is that if we only have some kind of a set of the points where basically each of the points uh, only has the position or the color information, uh, using this kind of the point cloud of basically how we're gonna basically do some kind of the rendering, right? Uh, so basically when you do some kind of the rendering, uh, we would like to assume that there is some kind of the surface information, right? And then basically if we want to do some kind of rendering with the surface information, these kind of the surface uh, basically need to be interpolated uh, in some kind of regions. So which means that uh, the surface also should have some sort of the, some kind of the surface area information. So also people started to basically extend uh, the basic kind of the components of the subfield into the disk, uh, basically having the position and the color and also defining the number and also the radius as well. So in terms of like fitting each of the points, it's kind of the disk. Then we, what we can see is that now we are fitting all these kind of like points as like having a set of the disks and replacing the triangles with the, the disks in terms of having the disk as kind of the, uh, the primitives or the rendering. Uh, and then we can basically use the typical kind of restoration or the ray tracing the pipelines uh, with these types of the primitives. So this is the basic idea. And these subfields uh, were introduced in the like 2001 or something, and then also revisited uh, in the recent linear rendering the literature. So this was also uh, one of the some sort of the uh, earlier the work uh, using the the surface the split. Uh, splitting kind of the idea in terms of like doing some sort of the uh, 3D reconstruction with the differentiable the rendering the pipeline. Uh, so you can also check out this work. Uh, but the basic thing is that in the success of the, the nerve, what we could see is that uh, it's better to uh, represent all the 3D thing in, not into the surface, but into the volume. So that's why we are also using the volume rendering, right? Uh, so here the basic idea is that uh, instead of like when, he, like when you have some sort of the volume split instead of the surface split, how we can also utilize this volume spread uh, in some kind of the volume rendering the pipeline. Uh, so this is the basic idea uh, in the Gaussian split. Why also there are tons of some kind of engineering in terms of like doing some uh, real this 3D construction. So whether we have some kind of the surface split or like the volume split, basically utilizing this kind of the split and having some hybrid representation uh, is good uh, in terms of that there are some kind of these two uh, major advantages. Uh, the first thing is that like when you have this kind of the, some explicit the primitives, uh, we can directly use the restaurant in the pipeline. So we don't need to shoot a ray and sample the points along the ray and just, you know, uh, evaluate some kind of input function to look up all these quantities. So what we are actually going to do in the Gaussian split the pipeline uh, is that we are going to really like render all these primitives uh, into the 2D plane using some kind of the restoration the pipeline and then do a typical kind of the, the, the process uh, in the restoration pipeline. So this is good in terms of that uh, we can really uh, you know, reduce all this computation time and also we can utilize uh, the typical the graphics the pipeline with all the shader language all the things. So this was kind of the one of the advantages in terms of that we can really the uh, reduce the competition the time. And also the other kind of the major the advantage is that uh, so you know, for all this kind of the neural network the pipeline, uh, we need to basically have the camera pose information, right? So here basically we all assume that given a set of the images, uh, we have the camera pose information and do some kind of 3D construction. And here the question might be is that how we obtain this kind of the camera pose information. So for that, uh, we are using some kind of the some you know, algorithm in the structure from motion. So we are not gonna go into some details for the structure from motion. Uh, but if you are also interested in this, uh, you can also check out the, the, the lectures in the machine learning for 3D data, the course. But actually the thing is that uh, as the output of the structure from motion, we are not only getting the camera pose information for the images. Uh, but actually the intermediate steps in the, the structure from motion basically involves like you know, finding some sort of the corresponding the pixels across the images and shooting the rays to find the intersection point in this 3D space. 
uh, which means that actually as the output of the structure from motion, we are also having some kind of this, some, some sort of 3D construction, but which is basically uh, becoming some sort of this sparse the point cloud. Uh, so this part, the point cloud itself is basically not useful uh, to directly like, to be rendered into some kind of real images, uh, but still this kind of sparse the point cloud can be useful as some sort of the initial the, 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 you know, the volume display uh, so that we can start to do some kind of optimization with this kind of initialization. So here the major the advantage is like having the, uh, this kind of like using this like split the representation is that uh, we can utilize this kind of the some you know sparse point clouds uh, coming from the structure from motion as kind of the initialization. So we are starting from some sort of the you know some rough three uh, D construction and basically doing some kind of the refinement uh, over the optimization. Uh, so this also basically allows us to basically uh, achieve some three D construction uh, more basically you know in a, you know faster way. So these are basically one would be some kind of the major advantages uh, having this kind of split representation. So yeah, then the, here the question might be is that you no, know, if we have some this kind of a set of the some sort of the volume display. Uh, so how we are going to basically render all the things into this using some kind of volume rendering equation. Uh, so this is kind of the main part that we are going to discuss for today. And before we move on, do you have any questions on this? So actually the main thing that we are going to, to discuss for today is basically how we are going to define this kind of the volume split and also how we are going to use the volume rendering equation uh, in terms of doing some kind of the rendering. And for that, we are basically going to follow some kind of the ideas in the old paper, uh, the, you know, in the, published in the 2002. So you can also check out some more details for the formulation uh, in this paper. But we are going to go in a step by step uh, in this world work in terms of like how we do some kind of volume rendering with the volume displays. So let's first see like how we first define this kind of the volume split. Uh, so uh, we are going to basically assume that each of the volume split basically have the opacity information and the color information. So these are basically something that we are basically evaluating with the neural network the increased function, right? But now we are assuming that you know, each of the this kind of the volume here, the volume split, uh, which looks like some kind of ellipsoid, uh, is basically including the opacity information and the color information. So for the basically the color information, you can define the color as kind of some constant value uh, for each of the the you know the 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 volume split. Uh, you can also make it as kind of the, the view dependent information. Uh, then it's exactly following the uh, the nerve the equation having some sort of the uh, radiance information. So the difference with the nerve is that in the nerve, uh, those kind of the quantities were basically you know uh, you know uh, returned from some kind of the neural network as kind of implicit representation. So now we are having the explicit uh, the opacity and the color information which are basically encoded uh, for each of the display. And additionally, for each of the volume split, uh, we are basically having this kind of the elliptical, some Gaussian the corner, uh, which is defined with the center point uh, P and also the covariance the matrix the V. Uh, obviously, it should be the symmetric the matrix. So we are basically, you know, in the 3D space, having this kind of the position, uh, the center point, and also kind of the 3D axis, define some kind of local coordinates and also the scale information, which are basically defined with the covariance the matrix. Make sense? Uh, so given this kind of the center and the covariance the matrix, uh, we are going to define the elliptical the Gaussian corner uh, like this. Uh, so which is really making some kind of the, uh, some the ellipsoid shape of the Gaussian the corner. And basically the meaning of the, this kind of the Gaussian the corner is basically, uh, is calculating some kind of the, amount of the influence uh, from the, uh, the given the volume display uh, to the any of the point in the 3D space. So it becomes some kind of the weight information for any point in the 3D space, uh, how much of each of the volume split uh, will affect the point uh, in the 3D space. So becoming some kind of the distance based on sort of the, the weight information from the split uh, to the any of the point in the 3D space. 
Makes sense. So we are going to have lots of these kind of the you know the volume splits in, uh, in this 3D space. And what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to rasterize uh, all these kind of Gaussian split uh, from the object coordinate system into the rate coordinate system. So these are also the things that we have seen in, in, the, in the second lecture, like having some kind of less range the pipeline. Uh, we are having some kind of the model with transformation and also the project of the transformation. So the object coordinates is kind of the, so it's also called the world coordinate. But every time when you change the, the camera pose, uh, we are having some kind of the new, some sort of the camera that coordinates the system. And we are also converting the, this uh, into the rate coordinate system that we are also going to see uh, in the next slide. So we are going to have these notations. X is for the objective coordinates, and F is basically the, the model view the transformation, uh, converting the object coordinates into the camera the coordinates. And G is the project trans transformation, also converting the camera coordinates into the ray coordinates. Uh, so please check out uh, this kind of notation that we are having here. Uh, so here, basically, what do we mean by basically ray coordinates? Uh, so this is basically nothing but having some sort of the projective uh, the transformation, uh, projecting all the these thing, things in the three D space into the two D. Uh, but the only thing is that uh, for this you no know, uh, the project transformation, uh, we are having basically this extra term. So as you can see, the first two term is basically nothing but projecting the three D things into the two D uh, the coordinates. Obviously, we can have some difference to the projective the transformation, but let's think about the simplest case. Uh, we are having this kind of like simple projection into the 2D space, uh, but as kind of the extra the coordinates, uh, we are basically having this like distance term. Uh, so this is kind of like some small difference with the uh, typical the the pipeline that we are seeing in the OpenGL framework, right? So yeah, so this is the we, our definition uh, in this simplest case. Uh, that we are having this project transformation of uh, projecting 3D things into 2D and having one more basically the coordinates, uh, which is about the distance. Okay. So here also one key thing is that, so we are defining the center point and the covariance matrix uh, for every single the, the, you know, Gaussian split for the volume spread, right? Then here the question is that where do we, in which space we define those kind of things? Uh, obviously, like those quantities will be defined in the object coordinate system, right? So we are having some kind of the uh, world coordinate system, and every time when we basically choose the you know the camera the pose, uh, we are going to determine the camera coordinate system and also the rate coordinate system. So which means that for every the you know, Gaussian split, uh, we are going to first define the center point and the covariance matrix uh, in the old object coordinate system, right? So which means that uh, if we want to uh, compute uh, this corner for any kind of the point, uh, if this point uh, was basically represented with the objective coordinate system, then we can just compute this, right? But if the point uh, was basically having the ray coordinates, then we will need to first uh, convert this into the camera coordinates and the object coordinates and calculating this. Uh, is this clear? Just nothing but just changing the coordinate system. So let's you know, keep this in mind that you know, we are having this notation. So X basically indicates object coordinates, X prime indicates camera coordinates, and X double prime indicates like ray coordinates. So depending on where we are basically defining point in which coordinate system, you know, if you have, have the uh, you know point defined having some kind of ray coordinates coordinates like this, then you will need to convert this back into the object coordinate first, and then calculating this kind of the Gaussian corner. Great. Any questions on this? So please keep this you know, you know, in mind. So we are moving on to slightly more complicated kind of things. Uh, but so let's see. Uh, so uh, given any kind of a 2D pixel x y with the x y coordinate in the ray coordinate system, now we would like to compute the volume and the equation. So this is exactly the same equation that we have seen in the NERF, right? Uh, we're having the color information, opacity, and the transparency. And the transparency was defined with opacity like this. 
So instead of like having the time, we are going to now have the distance from G here. Uh, and this distance, uh, by definition of the, of the our direct coordinate system, uh, this distance becomes the Z coordinates uh, in the array coordinates, right? So given any kind of the 2D pixel defined with the X, Y coordinate, uh, we are shooting the ray uh, along the Z axis, uh, basically having the Z coordinate here. And if you combine this X, Y, Z, that becomes our the ray coordinates, right? This is nothing but just having the same, you know, uh, the volume rendering equation. Now here, the question might be still like, how we calculate this color and the opacity information with the given uh, the set of the volume displays. So given the set of the volume displays, uh, what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to uh, define the opacity as the weighty sum as follows. Uh, so the only thing is that since now we are having the points, uh, which is defined in the ray coordinate system, uh, we are calculate uh, the you know, weight, uh, which is defined with the, the Gaussian corner like this, right? So we are first sending this kind of the point defined in the ray coordinate system uh, into the orbital coordinate system, then we can calculate the weight, uh, you know, which is the influence from which we display uh, into any kind of point in this space. Then basically the opacity uh, is calculated as kind of the weight itself uh, for it to be the volume split. Uh, is this clear? So you can see that I just like introduced some kind of the new term, uh, G top line, which is nothing but just like uh, rewriting this part like this. It's just like making some sort of the simple, simpler form, right? And also, basically, the multiplication of the color and the opacity uh, will be also defined as kind of the some weight itself, uh, as follows. With some kind of approximation that you know all the uh, Gaussian split has some kind of the constant color uh, along that direction. So these are basically some sort of the our the definitions of the opacity and the the multiplication of the opacity and color here. Right. So just keep. This mind, then you know, we're having some new notation, which is basically calculating uh, the you know, weight uh, for the, the point uh, in the ray coordinate system uh, with some kind of the Gaussian the corner defined uh, for the each of the you know the display. For the ice display, uh, we can compute the weight like this by just feeding the uh, you know points defined in the ray coordinate system. Then here the question is that can we then rewrite the volume rendering equation by replacing this part like this and also this part like this? So let's do some kind of the exercise.
Did anyone get the results like this? So we are basically kind of like treating the color and the opacity term to be constant for each of the uh, this plate. Uh, while basically during this the quantities uh, with the weight, uh, which is defined with Gauss and Connor here, right? So in terms of that, we can like rewrite these things in, like this. And also this is the case that we are uh, yeah also uh, you know uh, in place in these two. Uh, and also instead of like taking the exponential of the like minus sum of these things, we can change this as like taking the product uh, of the exponential of the some kind of quantities here, right? So we just like rewrote the volume and the equation like this. And we would like to you know, further like simplify uh, this equation with some kind of assumption and also uh, some kind of the tricks. Uh, so there are basically some kind of the assumption and the approximation and many kind of things. Uh, which means that it doesn't need to be simplified in this specific way. But let's basically see the exact deformation that was introduced in this specific paper. Uh, well, first of all, basically, we are going to introduce some kind of the new term, uh, which is basically indicating uh, the integral of the Gaussian split uh, along the ray direction. So we could basically take the integral of the Gaussian split along that this specific ray direction uh, to the end of the ray, then we're going to basically get this quantity, like defined like this. And uh, just to simplify the formulation, uh, we are also going to use the first order, the exponential expansion uh, to simplify uh, the, you know, the exponential minus x is kind of like you know, approximating this as kind of one minus x. So this is also kind of the, uh, the approximation. And also basically one big assumption that we are having uh, is basically the assumption of the local supports and the, the zero over x, uh, of course, the uh, the volume, the, the, the splits. So what we are going to assume is that uh, we are first assuming that all the volume splits are basically sorted uh, in the basic order that the first one is the closest one and the last one is the farthest one. Okay. So any kind of a point uh, in the 3D space, uh, what we are going to assume is that if the weight uh, from the, the ice, the volume, the, the, the split uh, is non-zero, it's basically greater than the zero, that we are going to assume that the weight uh, from the all the, uh, the next displays after the ice displays uh, becomes zero, right? So which means that uh, if we are having any kind of the point uh, which is basically affected by like one of these plates, then we are going to assume that all the, the other the displays uh, which is like coming the next uh, is, are basically not affecting to this point. So this is basically some kind of very strong assumption that we are going to uh, utilize to simplify this equation. Uh, so that, that, you know, in this equation, what this means is that uh, if this value is basically not zero, uh, basically we are having some kind of the uh, influence from the ice flat to this point, then what we are going to see is that basically this quantity becomes zero uh, because there's no effect uh, for here. Right? So this means that this whole term becomes zero, and we are just taking the exponential zero, and which means the one, right? So this is the very strong assumption that we are going to utilize. So given this kind of the three kind of the definition and the approximation and the assumption, uh, we are going to also see the uh, simplified uh, the version of the equation. Uh, so let's rewrite this equation again uh, by having these kind of things. So we are replacing this like this and also having the approximation and the assumption here. Uh, based on that, if we rewrite the equation, what the kind of the some simplest form that we are going to get.
Also here, one quick thing is that if we are like you know, calculating this equation for the point x dot plan here, uh, which is for the i's split, and if we calculate this term in the exponential, uh, for some any kind of the previous day split, uh, it becomes the same whether you take the integral of this term uh, over the entire degree uh, or until this point, uh, because we also assume that uh, this the previous split uh, is not affecting to the points, uh, which is like affected by the next split, right?
So maybe we can go one by one. So from the local the support assumption, what we can do is that we can replace this to be I, right? It goes like for the split after the ice one, uh, the basically this term here, uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether you can see my mouse point. Uh, this term uh, in the green box will become zero, which means that exponential of this the zero becomes one. So we can basically ignore this kind of term, right? We can first re replace this to be i, and then we can also replace this to be z max. Uh, because for the old split, uh, before the i split, like it's the same whether taking the integrals to that point uh, or taking the integral over the entire d rate, right? Uh, from the local uh, the support assumption. So, so also one thing is that you might be confused that like we are having the x double prime term here. Uh, we are taking the while taking the interval of the z. So actually here the x double prime is the uh, you no know, ray coordinates, uh, which is having the x, y, z coordinates. So we are taking now integral over the z axis, right? So then now we can see that we're, like, we're replacing this to be i, and we have the z max. Uh, then we can simply like rewrite this part uh, with the qi term that we introduced. And we can also do the same thing uh, here as well. And then we are also replacing the exponential minus x uh approximating approximating this into the one minus x right then what we get in, you know at the end is basically we are having this kind of term so we replace the so n to be i minus one actually uh, sorry and then we are also replacing this to g max so that we are into having the q uh, j term and also the q i term and then you know, approximating the exponential the minus x as kind of the one minus x like this uh, so this is the very basic equation that we are using for it based on the split based in rendering. Uh, obviously, you can see that there are lots of kind of assumptions that is basically involved here. So which might mean that we can also introduce some kind of the new equation. But until this point, uh, do you have any question like how we uh, came up with this equation? So what we can see is that we are having the color term here and the opacity term here, uh, which are basically some attributes uh, defined for each of the Gaussian display. And we are also having the function uh, defined uh, for each of the split, uh, which is taking the uh, ray coordinates and returning some kind of the weight uh, the top here. Any questions on this? Yeah, I guess, you know, if you, uh, okay, you like the following all this equation, then here the remaining the question is that how we exactly calculate this Q term, right? Uh, which was the case that we are taking the integral along some kind of the line, uh, passing through the ellipsoid like this, uh, so elliptical decoder. Uh, so when we basically have this kind of some elliptical decoder, the Gaussian corner defined with the center and the covariance matrix, uh, how we are also going to compare this? With, well, I mean, yeah, so this integral to basically what we are going to do is that to like you know make it easy to calculate this integral. Uh, now we are going to uh, approximate uh, this term as kind of some sort of the transformed uh, the, the Gaussian the, the corner uh, in the ray coordinate system. So these are the cases that we are having defining the, the Gaussian corner uh, in the object uh, the coordinate system uh, with the center point and the covariance. Uh, but by basically transforming this kind of the uh, ellipsoid uh, into the, the, the ray coordinate system, we transform the center point and the covariance the matrix. Uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to approximate uh, this kind of the, the kernel of the output uh, with basically the kernel of the competition, the ray coordinate system uh, with some kind of the scaling the vector. So this is what we are going to do. Uh, so let's do this like step by step. So let's first see like how we can do this uh, from the conversion to the object coordinate to the cardinal coordinate first. So like when we have this kind of the you know the, the point defined in the object space, uh, now we are going to like you know uh, you know calculate the same thing uh, with this kind of like the weight competition in the cardinal coordinate system uh, with some kind of scaling factor. So let's do this uh, first. Uh, so what you know, how we define the model view transformation? 
so a typical ED model based transformation will be basically defined as kind of the offline transformation, uh, which is basically having the linear part, uh, linear transformation here, and also the translation, right? So when you define the model based transformation kind of the function, uh, denoted as the F here, uh, the F will become the WX plus T, and then you no, know, the inverse conversion, um, wait, it should be right here, right? Uh, the convert from the camera coordinate to the open coordinates uh, will be defined like this. Then based on this, uh, without any kind of derivation, let me first show that, you know, so now we are going to transform uh, the center and the copiers like this. So let's say like this is kind of the transform center point uh, in the camera coordinate system, and the V prime is also the copiers of the matrix uh, defined in the camera coordinate system. These are like all defined like this. And what we are going to do is that uh, by like computing this you know, Gaussian corner in the camera cooling system, we are going to see what's this killing factor in a way that you know the, the weight that we are computing in the camera cooling system uh, matches the weight that we are calculating in the object cooling system. So given this definition of the P prime and the V prime, basically some transform position and the uh, the coolness matrix is in the, the camera the space. Uh, what should be this killing factor, the C prime here? So let's quickly calculate this. So these are some kind of the hint. So also the way that what you know, on how we calculate this is that you know, we know how we can define this, right? And we can so, uh, we know like how we can calculate this as kind of the uh, inverse of the model transformation, which was defined as kind of like inverse times minus. G. So we can just like simply plug in this uh, into this equation and see what we get.
So, okay, as we are running out of time, so let me first move on, but you can also check out some more details for the formulation. So this is basically nothing but we are just plugging, uh, you know, this uh, inverse of the, the body of the transformation uh, into the X and also the, uh, the P here. And what we can see after like all the derivation is that uh, it becomes like calculating this weight become the same. Uh, that we are calculating the weight with the transformed, uh, you know, the center point and the covariance the matrix defined in the, uh, you know, camera the coordinates. Uh, then we will need to basically multiply this kind of the scaling term, uh, which is basically coming from some kind of the scaling part uh, of the linear the transformation. Uh, so which means that there was no scaling, uh, only rotation, uh, in the our the you know the multiple transformation. Uh, there is nothing that we need to basically mm -hmm. uh, multiply here as kind of scale term. Uh, but basically here the basic idea is that uh, if the transformation was basically a affine transformation, uh, we can basically simply like redefine, uh, defining the same the the gauge and the corner uh, in the new space uh, with some transformed uh, the center and the covariance the matrices uh, and covariance the matrix and then basically multiplying this kind of the scaling the vector. So this is kind of the doable. But here the problem is that like uh, for the next step, uh, for the conversion from the camera coordinates to the ray coordinates, uh, how we can how can you do the same thing? So here the problem is that actually this transformation is not a fine transformation, but actually the project tra transformation. So actually there's no way that we can define the same, you know, uh, some kind of the Gaussian and the corner uh, that will basically give some kind of the same uh, some sort of the, you know, uh, the complicated outputs uh, with the, the camera coordinates. So what actually we have done in the previous case is that uh, we are defining some kind of the same the Gaussian corner in the camera coordinate with some kind of the transformation. But in this case, like when you have some kind of product transformation, it's impossible to define the same the Gaussian corner as kind of the Gaussian corner in the new space. Uh, so what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to approximate uh, the product transformation as kind of be a affine transformation uh, for each of this plan. So this is kind of like done for every single display. Uh, and let's think about like this specific, uh, the simplest case of like having this specific the project transformation. Uh, then what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to approximate uh, this project transformation using the, uh, the first order detail expansion then we get this kind of some sort of the approximation uh, for the same the project transformation, right? But what we can say is that this becomes like having some sort of the translation depart and also the linear the transformation. And this linear trans transformation is basically defined as kind of the, the Jacobian the matrix. So if we basically calculate the Jacobian the matrix uh, of that specific the transformation, then we are having this specific the Jacobian the matrix and if we basically uh, compute the, fir the first order detail expansion uh, for the center point uh, of the display uh, in the, the camera coordinates, then we can see that uh, the given the project transformation can be approximated uh, into this point, still having some kind of the linear transformation and some kind of the translation, right? So in this case that we have, we have some kind of linear transformation and the translation, uh, we have seen like how we can also uh, calculate the some transformation of the center point and the covariance matrix and also the scaling factor, right? Uh, so for this specific case, like having this linear the transformation, the translation, uh, can you can you basically you know also answer like what should be basically some uh, the transformed center point and the covariance and the scaling factor here? So previously, this linear transformation was you no know, W, and the translation was simply T, right? So when you have the linear transformation W and the T here, then P fine it was basically W uh, P plus T, and the V prime was uh, 
So if we do the same thing, like if we now define the P dot line, then this becomes like, so we just plug in P prime into this equation. If you just plug in P prime uh, into this equation, then these two will be canceled out. Uh, then the P dot line will become G uh, P prime. And also when you have some kind of the V prime, the V double prime will also become uh, J I by V prime and J I as both. Just following the exactly same thing that we have done in the previous the transformation, right? So that means that uh, we are going to have this kind of the transformed uh, the vertices, the, the center point, and transform the Cobias the matrix and the scaling top. Uh, from, from the converted from the camera coordinates to the ray coordinates. So if we combine these two, like from the uh, object coordinates, the ray coordinates, then what we are going to see is that now the P top line uh, can be defined like this. From the center point defining the object coordinates to the kind of the points in the ray coordinate system. And also the covariance will be also converted like this, multiplying uh, like the matrices like this. And then the scaling factor also will be defined like this. So here the thing is that uh, W was the linear transformation part uh, coming from the, the, the model of the transformation from the camera pose. JI is basically the Jacobian matrix that we are calculating for each the Gaussian split. So by multiplying those kind of the quantities, now what we can do is that if we come back to this equation in terms of like how we are going to calculate this uh, with some kind of the, Ga the Gaussian split uh, defined in the, uh, the rate coordinate system, then we can basically replace uh, approximating this part uh, into this uh, formulation. Uh, we transformed uh, the center point and the transformed covariance matrix defining the rate coordinate system. Then we are basically having this uh, with the transformed center point and the transformed divariance here. Now once we basically have all this kind of like transformation, the good thing is that this integral becomes nothing but just like taking the integral along the g axis. So we can just ignore the x and the y axis, just taking the integral along the g axis, uh, then that becomes our kind of the answer for like calculating this stuff. Any questions on this? Okay. So yeah, so it basically as you can see, it involves some kind of the slightly complicated uh, some equations. So I also recommend you to check out this. Uh, so when you typically talk about the Gaussian split, like people uh, don't speak about like this kind of some underlying the some calculation. It's, it's more of a, some kind of engineering. Uh, but actually, if you start to look into some more details of like all these equations. Uh, then you can see that actually this involves lots of kind of the, some approximation or some kind of assumption. So this might mean that we can also uh, into some kind of the better equation like calculating all these kind of the uh, volumetric equations using the, these plots. And here also like one quick question is that uh, when do we need to update the center point and the covariance the matrix, the transformation like those things? Uh, you can see that actually this equation involves the, the W part and also the JLE. So these are basically uh, also coming from the, the camera pose. So which means that uh, if you have some kind of the rotation of the camera pose, then you will need to, you will need to basically update all these kind of quantities, uh, but not for the every single the pixel, for the given the set of the Gaussian split. Uh, so the rendering the pipeline, what we need to do is that uh, once you have some, any kind of the camera pose, then every single the pixel, you will first need to collect all the set of the, the subset of the, the splits uh, that is basically falling into that specific pixel, then we will need to you know, sort all these kind of splits based on the, the depths, uh, the order, right? And then we are calculating this uh, information uh, with the given the specific the camera depots, and then we are calculating the volume of the equation. So this is the kind of some procedure that we are uh, doing some kind of the rendering the pipeline.
And if you also see how we exactly train all these like the Gaussian split, I also recommend you to check some details in the paper. Uh, but we're gonna basically initialize this split uh, based on this part of the point cloud coming from the structural motion uh, with some kind of the you know isotropic equivalency matrix, and then basically updating all these kind of split parameters using some kind of the uh, the loss and the the you know the backpropagation. propagation. And there are also some kind of steps that we are also cloning these plates uh, for some kind of the under reconstructed regions and also splitting these plates in the over reconstructed regions. And so there are actually lots of the, the engineering in terms of like how we can get some kind of the, uh, some kind of define the outputs of this rigid really construction. So today we uh, dig into some kind of some details about how exactly we calculate uh, this volume dynamic equation with these plates. And uh, in our the, the gas vector, I guess we're gonna see some more kind of the higher level the ideas in terms of like how we can uh, make some kind of better the reconstruction and the rendering the systems. Uh, we're gonna also discuss some more the papers in the paper presentation uh, based on the Gaussian split. So until this part, until the Gaussian split, this will be the scope of the midterm. Uh, and also we are going to have the midterm uh, next week. So if you have any questions about the midterm, any the materials, uh, then we discuss over. Uh, please post the questions in Slack. Then we can also go over with the questions. Any questions? Okay. So yeah. So this is the end of the today's lecture. And as I said, uh, there is no lecture this Wednesday. Uh, we're gonna have the midterm next week and break uh, for the week after the midterm, and we're gonna resume the lecture on April 29th. So I will see you uh, the last week of the April. Thank you, bye.